Sooner or later, when developing web applications and APIs in PHP, you'll need to know how to use a router. In this video, you'll learn what a router is, why you might want to use one, and how they work. We'll do this by first developing a router in PHP from scratch so you can see just how it works. Then I'll show you how to integrate a fully featured third-party router into your projects. So what is a router? Basically, it's what connects the request from the client, for example a web browser, to code on the web server. When the web server receives a request, it decides which code to run based on the content of the request. By default in PHP, the URL directly corresponds to files and folders on the web server. This is referred to as file-based routing. This is fine for small projects where you only have a few files. There are a few problems with this, however. As projects get larger, managing all these files and folders can get difficult. Also, if you want to reorganize the code and move a file to another location, you would have to change any URL that refers to that file. Plus, the URLs are not necessarily SEO friendly. Instead, larger PHP projects typically use a different form of routing, one where the URL does not correspond directly to a PHP file. Let's start by building our own router to see how they work. The first thing we need to do is configure the web server so that URLs no longer correspond directly to files. If you're using the Apache web server, then you can do this with an htaccess file. So let's create a new file called htaccess, making sure we include a dot at the start of the file name. In here, we write directives that configure the web server for the content of this folder. So first, we'll turn the rewrite engine on. So this works, you'll need to make sure the mod rewrite extension is enabled. Then we have a couple of conditions that check the requested URL doesn't correspond to an existing file or an existing directory. This is so that we can still request files directly if we need to. Then we have a rewrite rule that redirects all requests to a file called index.php. The QSA flag at the end makes sure that any query strings are also sent to index.php and the L flag just makes this the last rule processed if it matches. All this code basically does is forward all requests to a file called index.php, instead of trying to match the URL to a file as it did before. Next, let's create the index.php file itself. In here, we'll add the PHP opening tag and enable strict type checking. For now, let's just output a message so we can see the redirect is working. So if I open index.php in a browser, we see the message. However, let's try a URL that normally would give an error as the file doesn't exist. We still see the message. In fact, any URL that I try, including one that includes slashes and one that includes a query string, still requests the file index.php. So now all requests are coming through index.php. Now we need to decide which code to run based on the request. We can get the value of the URL in the server superglobal, in the request URI element. Instead of this message, let's print the value of that out. Now when we run this, we get the path part of the URL printed out without the hostname. Note that this includes the query string. The query string will typically contain parameters for the request, such as a page number, search terms, and so on. So we don't need this to decide what code to run. We can remove the query string from the URL using the parseURL function, passing in the PHP URL path flag. Now we have the path without the query string. Instead of printing this out, let's assign it to a variable. Now we can decide what code to run based on the value of this variable. This is known as routing. A simple way to do this might be to have a simple switch statement like this. For each case, we could output different content. If the path doesn't match any of these, we can use the default case to print out a page not found message. So now in the browser, we can specify these URL paths and we get different output for each one. For a path that doesn't match, we get the page not found message.
This is very simple, but also very limiting, as if we have a lot of URLs and a lot of code to run for each URL, this would very quickly get unmanageable. Instead, let's create a separate component to do the routing. This is known as a router. Let's create a new file called router.php. In here, let's add the PHP opening tag, enable strict type checking, and add the class definition. Back in the index file, each case of the switch statement contains a path that we're matching to the URL path from the request. These are known as routes. Inside each case block, we have code that runs when the route is matched. So in the router, we need to be able to store a list of routes and how to handle that route when it matches. So first, let's add a private property to store the routes and their handlers, for which we'll use an array. Then let's add a public method called add, which has a string argument for the path and a closure argument for the handler. This won't return anything, so we'll specify the return type declaration as void. Inside here, let's add an element to the roots property using the path as the key and the handler as the value. Next, let's add a method that will choose a route based on the path from the URL. This is referred to as dispatching, so we'll call the method dispatch. This will have a string argument for the path and won't return anything. Inside here, let's use the array key exists method to see if the path supplied matches any of those in the roots property. If so, let's get the handler from the array using the path as the index. As this is a closure, we can run it with the call user func function. If no path matches, let's just output a message saying page not found. Back in the index, let's comment out the switch statement. Instead, we'll use the router class. So first, let's require the file that it's in and create an object of that class. Then let's call the add method, specifying a single slash for the path and an anonymous function for the handler. Inside here, we'll just output a message. Likewise, let's add another route for an about page. Finally, let's call the dispatch method passing in the path variable. Let's try that. The home page works, as does the about page. If I try a URL that has a path we haven't specified a route for, we get the page not found message. Doing this is fine for fixed URL paths like these. However, what happens if the URL contains a variable, for instance, an ID? For example, let's add a route that contains a variable. Many third-party routers allow you to specify an ID in the route path like this, a variable name contained in curly braces. This wouldn't match literally. Instead, this would match URLs that had a value in this segment of the URL, for example, any of these. If this route matches, we want to be able to access this ID in the handler function. So let's pass in an argument for this value, and inside this function, we'll print out a message that includes the value of this argument. So in the router, in the dispatch method, how do we match the URL to this route? We can't do it as we were doing for these fixed route paths, because this is directly comparing the URL to the route. A route containing a variable won't match the URL path with a simple string comparison like this. So let's do it another way. First, let's loop around the array of routes in the routes property. Then, to match the URL to the root, we'll use a regular expression. So first, let's convert the root path into a regular expression pattern. Variables are a name, which is a sequence of characters between curly braces. So let's convert those to a pattern that matches a sequence of any character that isn't a slash. Any literal parts of the root won't be changed. So for example, this root path will be converted into this pattern. Then we can use this pattern to match the incoming path using the pregmatch function. Let's surround the pattern with the start and end delimiters so we only match the entire path. By including the pattern that matches the variable part in parentheses, this part will be extracted out into the matches array. For now, if it matches, let's just print out the contents of the matches array.
If it has matched, then we no longer need to check any other routes, so let's just return from this method. Let's try that with a URL that should match the one we added that contains a variable. It does match, and we get the contents of the matches array printed out. The first element of the array is the full string that matched, and the second element is the part that matched in parentheses. In this case, this part of the URL that contains a variable. If I change the URL, then the array contains this value. So one root is matching multiple URLs as it contains a variable part. If I change this to one of the other routes that doesn't contain a variable, then it still matches, but the matches array only contains the path that matched. So to get just the variable values in the matches array, we need to remove the first element. We can do this with the array shift function. Then instead of outputting the matches array, we can pass it to the handler function when we call it. For this, we can use the call user func array function, passing in the handler and the matches array. This will call the handler function, passing in the values from the matches array as arguments. Finally, just to complete this method, at the end, outside the loop, if the code reaches this point, then no root has been matched. So let's output the page not found message. Let's give that a try. For fixed URL paths, this still works. If I try the root that contains a variable, this works too, extracting the value from the URL and passing it to the handler. If I try a URL that doesn't match one of the specified routes, then we get the page not found message. Let's add another root that contains two variables just to see how that works. So we pass two arguments to the handler function, and we'll output both of these in the body. Let's try that. And it matches the root, and we get both values from the URL printed out. So it doesn't take a lot of code for a simple router that supports variables. We could continue to develop this to include additional features like regular expressions for variables, filter groups, and so on. However, there are many mature and tested third-party router packages available. Some are more complex than others, providing various different features. Let's see how we use one of these, the phroot package. Let's start by installing this using Composer on the command line. Then in the index script, first let's comment out the code that uses our router class. To use the phroot package, we need to load the files where various classes are defined. To do this, we'll require Composer's autoloader. Then let's import the classes we're going to use from this package into the current namespace. Then let's create an object of the root collector class, which is basically equivalent to the router class we just created. To add a root to the router, instead of an add method, there are several methods that specify the HTTP method that the root will match. For example, the get method will add a root that will only match the HTTP get method. Let's add a root for the home page, so specifying the root path as just a slash. For the handler, we'll specify an anonymous function. Inside this function, instead of using echo to output some content, we return a string. To output this, instead of a dispatch method on the router, the package provides a dispatcher object. So let's create a new object of that class. To configure this with the root data, we call the getData method on the router object and pass that to the dispatcher's constructor. Then to dispatch the request, we call the dispatch method on the dispatcher object. As the routing depends on the HTTP request method, the first argument to this needs to be the HTTP method used in the request. As with the path above, we can get this from the server superglobal. The second argument is the path, for which we already have a variable. This returns a response, which we can output directly. Let's give that a try for the home page, and this works, and we get the message printed out. Let's try a URL that doesn't match a root, and we get an exception. Note how this is a custom exception class that's part of the package so you could catch and handle this particular exception if you wanted to.
In addition to the get method, there are methods for all of the HTTP methods. So for example, if I change this method to post, then this route will only match if the post method is used. So now if I try the home page, it no longer works. And we get an HTTP method not allowed exception. Again, note this is a custom exception class that you can catch if you want to. If you want a route to match any HTTP method, then you can use the any method to add the route. Now if we try this, the home page works again. We can also add routes that contain variables. This works in the same way as our own router class. Let's add another route that responds to the HTTP get method, with a variable in the route path. We'll also specify a corresponding argument for the handler function. Let's try this. And this works as expected, passing the value from the URL to the handler. Note that we can put any value we like in this segment of the URL. With this package, we can specify a custom regular expression for root variables. For example, let's specify that the ID variable in this root has to be a sequence of one or more digit characters. So now, with a value that isn't numeric, the root doesn't match. It only matches if we specify the ID segment as a number. The package also supports functionality such as named roots, root groups, middleware, routing to controller classes and more. Check out the documentation here for more details. All of this is common functionality in many routers. When using a framework like Laravel or Symfony, you'll find the router is similar to what we just saw. Routes are specified as paths, and we specify code to handle that when it's matched. Typically, in larger frameworks like this, you can specify routes in one or more configuration files, or inside controller classes using attributes. There's a link to all the source code shown in this video in the description. Many thanks to my supporters over on Ko-Fi, and as always, thank you for watching.